We start out our EVA at the Quest airlock. Jeff will be EV1. He'll be coming out wearing the uh, red stripes. And uh, Kate will hand out an ORU bag to him uh, that contains all the IDA tools. She'll egress, and then they'll begin their translation forward out to the very forward end of the space station to do their work. Jeff will translate around the starboard side of the external stowage platform number two. He'll wait there just a moment while Kate finishes her initial translation adaptation and then translates over the top of the stowage platform out to pick up her foot restraint, which is on the very forward edge of the ESP2. Once she's got that, Jeff will translate forward on the lab and that up over the top of the node two and finally onto the PMA2 that's at the very forward end of the space station. He'll position the ORU bag on a couple of handrails that are right on the zenith side of the PMA and then open the bag so that they've got access to their tools and the equipment. In the meantime, Kate begins her translation. She's gonna translate up over the top of the lab and then forward onto the node two and finally forward onto the PMA2, where she translates down toward the nadir side and locates the socket where her foot restraint will go, or worksite interface. Once she has her foot restraint set up there, she'll be able to access the cables that were pre-positioned by Butch Wilmore on a prior EVA. They're tied off to a, in a bundle to a couple of handrails that are located on the PMA. While she's uh, getting set up, Jeff will also get his foot restraint and get it set up. It's currently located on the top of the Columbus module. He'll retrieve it from there and then move it down to his worksite interface on the PMA, which is um, more zenith and a little bit toward port. Uh, from there, each of them have access to be able to uh, reach their cables. Jeff's cables have also been pre-positioned on a prior EVA. Uh, Terry Burt's left uh, two bundles of cables there for him to access. Once they get into their foot restraints, they can attach their adjustable equipment tethers uh, loosely to the IDA. Kate has one adjustable tether, and in order to be able to reach between the handrail and the IDA to, uh, Jeff actually has two uh, tethers in series. When they're in position, they'll give the go to the robotics operator on the ground to release the IDA2 and back the Dexter arm away. At this point, the crew has complete control of the IDA. They'll cinch the tethers down into place, and then they'll begin mating the cables. This is uh, Kate's cable configuration on the nadir side. Here we see her at the neutral buoyancy laboratory practicing those cable mates. And uh, while she's mating her cables on the nadir side, Jeff is mating his on the zenith side. He has three cables to initially mate. These cables are providing uh, heater power to the docking adapter as well as the hook drive power and the sensor power. The switches will be commanded by the internal crew member, IV crew member. Talk will work at the IDA control panel, which is in the node two pressurized volume. As he operates the switches, it commands the hooks that are on the docking adapter to extend out, rotate around, and engage the passive hooks that are on the pressurized mated adapter. There's two sets of hooks, and while they drive the first set of hooks, the crew needs to remain still, but during the second drive, it's stable enough that they can begin work uh, installing a cover on the hemi-reflector that's on the nadir part of the PMA2. Then they're into their final cable mates. These final cable configurations remove the power from the hooks that uh, were driving to engage the PMA and provide visiting vehicle hook power. Here you see Jeff working in the neutral buoyancy laboratory. He's removing a couple of jumpers that are required to do his final cable mating. Once the cables are mated, uh, they have some outfitting to do. Uh, first, they'll be covering up the H fixture that the uh, Dexter robot arm was holding on to. Then there is a, another hemi-reflector that is on the PMA. They'll install a cover over the top of it and then move the tether that was holding that cover in place up to uh, tether to the large 
protective cover that's covering the IDA-2. That was in place for launch uh, in the uh, SpaceX Dragon. There are several straps that they need to work together to remove. Uh, it's very similar to the PMA covers that we've been installing and removing in the past. Here you see Kate working in the NBL to remove uh, the straps from the handrails holding it in place. The two of them need to work together to stuff that cover into the ORU bag. At that point, uh, they can install the two Hemi reflectors onto the docking adapter. And then the final thing that they need to do is made up the visiting vehicle power. Uh, it's one final cable configuration that needs to be made. Jeff uh, will complete that mating, and at this point, that docking adapter is ready to receive our new crew vehicle. The crew can pack up and clean up this work site. Kate will pick up her foot restraint and return it to the ESP2 from whence it came. Jeff has to pack up the ORU bag and also return his foot restraint. Uh, his foot restraint goes back um, from where it's located, uh, where he's been using it on the PMA. He'll take it back up to the top of the Columbus module. It'll be staged there in place for the IDA-3 installation that will be happening in late 2017. They return the ORU bag back to the airlock and then uh, go out, uh, Kate will go out to the lab nader to a bag that's already there and route the cable for IDA-3. We call it the white-green cable because we put some tape marks on it in white and green to indicate which one it is. She routes it forward to the node 2 where it's in position for the IDA-3 installation. Jeff has some work to do back uh, in the area where the Z1, the Node 1, the Node 3, and the lab all come together. We refer to this area as the rat's nest because of all of the cables and electrical, electrical lines and fluid lines that route through that area. He'll pick up the cable bundle that was left uh, in position at the end of EVA 35. He'll make a couple of connections down on the Node 2 and then route that cable across the Z1 tray over to the starboard side of that tray and then leave it in position there where it will be ready for its final routing on a future EVA. The last scheduled task for this spacewalk will be to remove a couple of caps from some connectors that are located just underneath the Z1 on the outside of the node one. At that point, the crew will return to the airlock and ingress if we've been particularly uh, lucky and efficient throughout the day and the hardware cooperates, rather than ingressing the airlock, we've got a couple of get-ahead tasks that we can do. One of them is to configure the port CETA cart. We'll tie down the brake handles to keep them out of the way for long-term operations on station. And then we also want to get some photos of the alpha magnetic spectrometer. From the uh, windows and from all the cameras on space station, we cannot see the outboard side of the AMS. And we'd like to get some photos of that area, see how it's doing, so uh, they can get those photos from the top of the uh, logistics carrier that's located right next to it.